All right, so thank you all so much for coming to our summer reading workshop with Sherry Norfolk. I'm so excited for you all to be here. Um, if you haven't yet, please do feel free to say hello in the chat box and include your name and library. Um, and as I said, if you'd like to share your camera, please do feel free if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, this session is being recorded, uh, but it will be password protected. Um, so I'll send that to all of you afterwards. Um, but it won't just be like available for everyone to see. Um, so, oh, let me make sure I admit everyone into the space. Um, a few things before we start, I just wanted to go over some logistics. Uh, so as I said, this will be recorded. It will be uploaded to the Montana State Library Vimeo channel. Um, if you want a copy of the Vimeo link and the password. If you could go ahead and just put your email into the chat box. Um, Zoom sometimes collects that, but sometimes it doesn't. So I just wanna make sure that everyone who wants it gets it. So please do put your um, email into the chat box um, and I'll make sure to email you the link afterwards. Um, for folks in Montana, if you would like Montana State Library credit, uh, please also put your um, name and library in the chat box and and so I can double check you against Aspen and make sure you receive your credit. Um, for school librarians or teachers who are on this call in Montana, I can provide OPI credit. Um, so if you just want to email me at akim at mt.gov, um, I can arrange that for you. And I can also provide a certificate of attendance um, for those who are out of state. So just let me know if you need that. Um, at any point in time, you can save the chat transcript, transcript if you would like. If you just click on chat, um, there is a, a bottom, a, a button in the bottom right, and it says more, or it's a dot, dot, dot button. If you click on that and you can save as, that will download the entire transcript for you. Um, I do also have some announcements at the end of this workshop. Um, so if you're able to stick around for summer reading announcements, please feel free to. Um, just a few little things to share with you all to help with summer reading planning. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is part one of two for Sherry's workshops. Uh, there is a part two happening next Friday on the 29th um, from 2 to 4 p.m. Mountain Time. So all of you are welcome to come to that. It's open to all um, and we'd love to see your faces again. Um, so I know that was a lot of logistical stuff. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I will be monitoring the chat box uh, for any um, comments or questions and I'll bring that to people's attention um, as well. Um, oh, those are the summer reading resources, and we're not going to do that now. I am actually going to introduce Sherry Norfolk, who is our uh, speaker for today. Sherry is um, wonderful. We actually had the privilege of, privilege of hosting her for our early literacy um, conference back in 2019. Um, Sherry is based in St. Louis. She is a professional storyteller, former children's librarian, jack of all trades, um, and she is great with summer reading and all sorts of ideas for young kiddos and old kiddos and adults <laughs> um, to participate in summer reading. So very excited to have her here with us um, and very appreciative of her efforts to help us with summer reading planning. Um, so Sherry, I'll go ahead and and turn things over to you. I'm going to stop my screen sharing so you can get that ready to go. Um, oh, actually, Sherry is calling me right now. Hold on one second.
Okay, folks, sorry, I had to mute myself. Um, Sherry just got disconnected. So I am going to pause the recording real quick. Recording again, um, just because I think this conversation would be super useful. Um, but yeah, for Tales and Tales, CSLP, um, what are folks thinking? What questions do you have for the upcoming summer? What concerns? What are you excited about? Um, what sorts of lessons from last summer are you planning to apply to this summer? Because <laughs> we find ourselves in similar straits. Well, Amelia, we were talking about doing stuff outside. Mm -hmm. And if you guys live anywhere near Whitehall, Lewis and Clark has a whole um, myriad of animals, stuffed animals and stuff that they'll come and do programs on. And I got an email from Emily Dickinson and her Vista has just been renewed. So she's Ooh, gonna be nice. there for another two years. So yeah, and she gives amazing programs. That's she awesome. Is so fun. She's done everything from how to make tea to, you know, from natural things to gathering your food in the forest on a walk and and so and everything they do is free. Awesome. Mm, love the sound of that. Free. <laughs> um Thanks for sharing, Jeannie. Uh, Camille had a question. This will be my first ever summer reading program. Wow. So any tips for a newbie? Um, I guess the main thing, and I think this is probably just applicable to anything in libraries, it's not stealing because every librarian shares things and is like, use it. <laughs> so it's totally fine to just like look at what other libraries are doing and just like control V. That is totally okay. Um, it's also totally okay to like, just, you know, since I've been able to see so many different kinds of summer reading programs, it's okay to make it as chill or as intense as you want it to be. Like summer reading is exactly what you and your patrons and your library want it to be. So if you want it to be super intense and like all these things, that's totally great. If you want it to be more laid back, that's also fine too. Don't feel like you have to there has like pressure for you to do it in a certain way because um, the program can be whatever you want it to be and can respond to however your patrons want it to be as well. Um, so that's just my main thing from what I've seen. I feel like a lot of pressure is what people put on themselves and it doesn't have to be, it should be a lot of fun. Um, so especially if it's your first year, if you just wanna start off with like, okay, we're gonna like register some folks and like, have maybe two or three programs, that's a great starting point. There will always be future summer reading programs where you can expand upon it in the future. But for people who've actually done summer reading, you should also give Camille some advice. <laughs> I was just gonna tell her, a lot of the chain restaurants, we're doing a winter reading program right now because our schools have been in session, out of session, and you know, in-house, out-house. Now they're on three days in, two days out. And so we went to Subway, Subway, Arby's, McDonald's. Um, Subway gave us um, enough lunches, free kids' lunches for basically every child in town under the age of 15. And so the friends bought the rest of them because um, they're only, and we just bought kids' meals for everybody. And we've had a huge turnout for that. And if something goes really wonky this summer, then that's just a way that we're going to do kind of an online, um, you know, what we tell people is if you don't want to come in the library, just drop your reading slip in the box and I'll mail you your free lunch. Mm -hmm. So they just turn stuff in, in the book drop. That's awesome. Um, and for those of you who don't know, CSLP is really, really active in the summer food program. Um, if that's something your library is interested in or helping and working with other organizations in your community to make sure that kids are getting fed during the summer, um, please, please reach out and let me know and I can connect you with all the summer food program people. Um, yeah, that's a really big thing that CSLP does. Um, a few things from the chat box. Uh, Val said, this might be a hard theme since we did fairy tales last year. I know that a lot of people really liked the fairy tale stuff. Um, Carrie asked, are people requiring masks for outdoor programs? And uh, Jeannie says, no. I think that's kind of dependent though upon like different county health 
requirements and, and local mandates and things like that. Um, so I think the answer to that question is best answered by your uh, public health, local county public health person. Um, so just talk with them, discuss with them. Um, if you're planning on having in-person programming outside or something like that, just make sure you run things by them and um, you're adhering to, to local uh, mandates. Well, and Amelia, too, part of it is we've had the, the city has let us use the baseball fields if we wanted to. They've offered that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said that they had uh, um, access to their community center because we're able to do no mass because we have so much space. We mm -hmm. can really spread that. The school was like, if you need to use the football field, it's all yours. And so, you know, if you've got places like that that will let you use them where you can really spread out, that helps. That's awesome. And of course, they don't Ooh, charge. Sorry, Sherry is calling again. So um, if you want to talk about uh, program ideas that you're excited about, I'll let you do that. But I'm going to mute myself now so I can talk with Sherry. I just wanted to say, this is Pam in Missoula, that um, like here in Missoula, even if we're outside, if it's a public event and we're able to have social distancing, we still have to wear masks. Um, there's no space big enough um, unless you want to, you know, shout at someone across the football field. Um, pretty strict up here in Missoula. Um, we're not even open uh, yet. The county hasn't allowed us to open at all. So I don't know what we'll do this summer. <laughs> Pam, we're kind of in the same boat. Don't feel bad. <laughs> like, like we, if we want to do an event and it, we think it might have over 25 people in Lewis and Clark County, we have to fill out a, um, it's an event plan request and it has to be submitted at least a month in advance um and our library just made the decision we are open for hold pickup only and we're going very slowly so we're doing a lot of online planning and yeah. we actually are going prizeless this summer because of that that might not be a bad idea because it was a pain <laughs> trying to get prizes to people last summer um because people weren't coming to the library and, you know, it was online. Well, how do I pick up my prize? It's like, well, you got to come to the library. Um, yeah. So, and we are, um, we have been doing curbside for, <clears throat> well, since sometime in the summer, we started up curbside um, once we had moved into our new building. Well, no, even before then. Anyhow, um, and we will can even if we do open and we do hope to open here, maybe the end of February, first part of March, we will still only open for may, a few hours in the morning and then do curbside in the afternoon. Um, so it'll still be a very much reduced um, time period that we are allowing people in the library. I think it just depends so much on what your conditions are, because we have 12,000 people in Jefferson County and we have eight cases of COVID. So, yeah, <laughs> poor Molly, <laughs> my friends and Helen are tearing their hair out. It's like, <laughs> so I, I really think it depends on just where you're at and, and how your cases progress, because I think our highest at one point we hit 75 out of 12,000 people and all around us. I mean, Butte was closed, Bozeman was closed, <laughs> Lewis and Clark was closed. <laughs> I've seen some of your people, they, they're driving to Whitehall. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Um, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so it turns out that um, they are digging up some utility things in Sherry Street. <laughs> uh, they've been doing a lot of construction. Um, so she doesn't have 
internet or cell service. <laughs> um, so, because uh, we were trying a different, a bunch of, I was like, oh, maybe you can just zoom in on your phone or maybe you can call in or, and that didn't seem to be um, an option. So I think what we're gonna do is next week on the 29th, we had originally scheduled part two of the workshop series. So we're just gonna bump part one to next week on the 29th um, from 2 to 4 p.m. Apologies in advance for anyone who isn't able to make that time slot. Um, we will be recording that um, so that we'll, we'll send it out that way and make it available in that way. Um, and then part two of the workshop, we're going to schedule for some time after the 29th. Sherry isn't able to check her calendar at the moment. Um, but we're hoping to do it at least within the week after the 29th, um, but it might be within a couple of weeks after that date. Um, so apologies again for the <laughs> unexpected delay. Um, and thank you all for your patience while we tried to get that figured out. Um, if you want to stay online for a little bit and just continue talking about summer reading, um, I'm I was scheduled to be on this until 4 p.m. So I am totally fine to stay and keep talking about summer reading, also just about, you know, library stuff in general, since we have quite a big spread of, of folks here. Um, but if you if you would rather sign off for the day, that's also totally fine as well. Um, so um, yeah. Thank you all for coming today. It was nice to meet you all. Um, and hopefully you guys will be able to come uh, next week if you can. But um, yeah, we'll just do part one next week on the 29th. So thank you all. <laughs> and then you said part two will be the week maybe following that? Hoping, hoping for the week after, like the next Friday. Okay. But Sherry's just not sure if she already has something scheduled. So I have to confirm that with her first. Um, and we'll announce on the 29th when that will happen, for sure, part two. Um, and that will also be in our Aspen training calendar. Um, so hoping for a week okay. after the 29th, but maybe it'll be two weeks um, or so, depending on Sherry's schedule. So Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions or just summer reading stuff? I guess I can go over some of the other resources that I was planning on talking about. Um, and I'll go over this next week as well. <laughs> but since we have extra time, I might as well just do it now. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, so yeah, for some summer reading resources that might be helpful, there is a 2021 summer reading webpage on the State Library website. So that's where I've just been posting kind of general updates. Um, CSLP, I'm, I'm on the state representatives listserv for CSLP. And so they send us updates about changes, things that have been happening. Um, so you can see on there that the online summer reading manual is available and ready to download. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, Camille, if you're still on here, um, that can give you lots and lots of ideas for all different age groups, all kinds of programs um, and activity ideas. Um, so that's a really good place to start planning. Um, in general, I'd also just recommend you check out the cslpreads.org website. Uh, they have Lots of great resources there on why summer reading is important for preventing the summer slide, um, the summer food program, as I mentioned, if your library is interested in becoming involved. Um, there's lots of ways that you can become involved. You don't have to become like a food site, like preparing the food or whatever. Uh, a lot of libraries actually serve as a partner site. So the food is prepared elsewhere, elsewhere and then brought to the library and then folks come and get their little snack pack and can get books at the same time. So that might be a format that works well for you. Um, in other cases, I know that libraries do a little pop-up station at the summer food site. So maybe it's not at the library at all, but they'll just come and bring some books, have a story time there, and allow people to check things out while they're eating lunch. Um, so there's a lot of different iterations, a lot of ways that um, you can make the summer food program 
work with the library. Um, and again, if you have questions or ideas about that, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, and you can also check out what CSLP has on their website. Um, for Montana libraries, we do have spaces left in Reed Squared in our statewide contract. Um, so that contract is valid until May 2022. Um, and Reed Squared has been super helpful for a lot of libraries. Um, I will say it's it's not it's not for every library. There's lots of libraries who've given it the good old college try and it just doesn't seem to work for their patrons and that's totally fine. But um, if online summer reading program trackers are something you're interested in, uh, reach out to me and you can definitely try it out with the statewide contract. It's free for you until May 2022. Um, and it's pretty, it, I'm not going to say it's totally intuitive. It does take a little bit of getting used to and like looking on the admin side, but there's a lot of training materials. Um, there's lots of other libraries in Montana who are using it. So if you have questions, um, I think there's a lot of support and resources now to help you best configure things and make it work for you. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, let me know uh, and I can get you signed up. Um, and I would recommend Sorry, excuse me, I would recommend starting sooner rather than later, uh, just so you have enough time to kind of train yourself and train any other staff who are planning on using it. Um, but that is an option. Um, and it can be used to supplement your regular summer reading tracking that you've done up until now too. Um, also, you can see that uh, reads so read squared and I think all the online summer reading tracking programs, there's a variety, um, they all have a program that you can import for the CSLP summer reading theme each year because um, they know enough libraries use it. Um, so as part of that, Read Squared has created a bunch of badges um, which you can use um, for missions and activities and you can program that, program that into Read Squared. Um, but they've just made those images available to CSLP. So um, if you want just a little bit of consistency between Read Squared and the graphics and the designs that you're making for your summer reading program, you can download those badges and use those um, to create whatever marketing materials you want. So those are available on the CSLP website. If you just log in um, and go to where the artwork is, um, I believe it's under additional content. Um, I also wanted to show you um, the social media toolkit um, that CSLP has created. Uh, so let me make sure I am sharing the right thing here. So um, CSLP has created the super nifty um, social media toolkit. So there's a letter here that kind of describes the toolkit and its purpose and all of that. And you can take a look at that. Um, but the really cool thing that they have is they have this uh, Excel spreadsheet. And I started to use this myself. I, I, I don't, I'm not great at social media, but I'm, I'm trying to learn how to use it for library stuff. Um, and this has been super helpful for me where it's organized by month um, and it has sample captions that you can use. And let me try and actually zoom in a bit on this. Sorry, that's probably a little hard for you all to see. Um, but you can see that it has um, sample captions. It has hashtags that you can use and a suggested graphic. Um, and a folder where you can find the graphics and also suggested links that you can put in. Um, so if you scroll down, I mean, obviously these are all just suggestions, but I find it a lot easier because um, honestly, I really hate doing social media stuff. So I find it a lot easier to post when I have something to work off. And even if I don't use this exact caption, it gives me something to alter and I don't have to create it myself. Um, so there's lots of really great things here. It covers holidays, it covers like reading events and that sort of thing. Um, and you know, these are things that you can um, use for your own library. Um, so if you're interested in using this, um, I 
definitely thought about putting this in the summer reading website. I don't know if I actually did or not. Um, here is the website. Let me scroll down and see if I did. Okay, I don't think I did, um, but I will put that link on this website here, um, and um, I'll also send it out on Wired. I'll try and send reminders on there too. Um, but all, all libraries in Montana are CSLP members, um, so this is a resource that you're welcome to use if you would like. Um, and then, do you guys see my PowerPoint now, or is it still on the website? We see your PowerPoint. You see the PowerPoint? Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to mention that we have brainstorming webinars that are coming up, so at least one per month through May. Um, and these are going to be kind of just informal, like getting together, here are some general discussion questions, let's share, let's talk, let's kind of troubleshoot things. Um, so it's not going to be a super formal presentation or anything like that. I might have some resources to share with you all, but it's mostly just a chance for the people, um, librarians to just kind of talk and, and see, get a feel for what's working and what's not and um, kind of consult with each other. Um, so those will all be posted in Aspen. The one for February is already scheduled. I think it's February 11th or 12th or 13th, one of those dates. <laughs> um, so anyone is welcome to that, but that will also be recorded. Um, and I'm looking into March to see when to schedule the March uh, brainstorming session as well. Um, so we'll be having those. And then uh, the Museum of the Rockies and Zoo Montana. Um, this year they won't be, Museum of the Rockies won't be providing a like the summer reading kit like we normally do. Um, instead, they are providing, planning on providing a lot of live stream programs. So libraries can sign up for available slots and um, have MOR staff or Zoo Montana staff zoom in and uh, give a presentation to um, folks. So depending on how your library is doing programming, maybe you're able to live stream something outside and so you can have a group of people at your library. Um, maybe you just want to share the link um, with your patrons and then they can just attend individually from their homes. Um, so that's totally up to you. Um, they're both setting those um, live stream sessions up, uh, the topics as well as the available times. Um, so more details on that will be forthcoming. And I believe both uh, the Museum of the Rockies and Zoo Montana will be coming to the February webinar to talk a little bit more about those offerings. Um, but yeah, Zoo Montana was very excited to hear about the CSLP theme for this year because they have a lot of animals <laughs> that they're more than happy to share and educate people about. So that is most of the resources for now. Um, any questions about CSLP, summer reading in general, what have you? <laughs> OK, so I have a question. So um... yeah. So summer reading theme this year is Tales and Tales, right? Yes. So I have the, I would say it's difficult, but I have the challenging task of coming up with an idea for themes because everything that I've looked for has been focused and geared towards children, right? Mm -hmm. On the, the Tales, T-A-I-L-S, aspect of it. So I was thinking maybe if I uh, lean towards the tales end of it, the story end of it for teens, if I could pull off a craft from that for gear towards teens. Towards teens? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, uh, teen programming, I think, in general, is like such a unique challenge. 
It um, is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we all remember what going through puberty was like. It's a tough time for teens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, they're like changing so much as people. Mm-hmm. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I think for teen programming, and if Alicia, if you haven't <coughs> had a chance to check out the, um, the CSLP manual, um, you might have to contact your Louisiana State Library um, point person about that, but they mm-hmm. do have some some pretty good um, ideas in there. And they're always a little okay. bit more like, not necessarily tech-based, but mm-hmm. like, you know, encouraging teens to kind of engage on social media or okay, yeah. doing something like you know, like TikTok trends or whatever it is that the young whippersnappers these days are doing. <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, you know, it, it's like teen interests change so quickly. Sometimes it's yeah. hard yeah. To, to see. So I think, you know, if it's something that you're excited about, then mm-hmm. I think that can be a good place to start. And then you usually get pretty quick feedback, I think, sometimes on whether yeah, they'll... it's working for people or not. Like this, like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a suggestion from Kate Radford. Um, she says, our teen librarian recently did a pet portrait craft kit from Creative Pet Book, portrait. All right. Yeah, which looked really <laughs> awesome. Um, and Molly just shared uh, an event from the Lewis and Clark Library. So teen craft at home. Um, mm-hmm. So there are- We have programs to go Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's so, for mm-hmm. every age. But I'm trying to get them to get like something different, you know? Yeah, because they get bored fast. <laughs> uh, yes. Like, what else is next? What else is next? <laughs> you know? I even I've done so many of the virtual escape rooms using Google Forms. Oh, so, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's been, you know, they've been liking those and, and the mystery trivia and mm-hmm. using Zoom to actually um, go ahead on and play the game, the uh, game MASH. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. I haven't thought about people, MASH in a long time. MASH is the, was a great hit for me. <laughs> I was like, all you need is a pencil and paper and your imagination. Where you think you're going to be. Who you yeah. think you're going to be with. Oh my gosh, that's so funny that MASH is still a thing. <laughs> it is. I found an actual virtual, uh, an actual digital website. Oh. It's called welovemash.com. Huh. And so it comes. That's amazing. Paper. Yeah, it comes. I was like, oh my God, I have to, this is taking me back to my childhood. So, but maybe like, it's like high-waisted jeans. You know, they went out of style and now they're back yeah. in style. So it's all mm-hmm. just like a cyclical thing. Yeah. All repetitive. Um, so, yeah, and so. Flores CE, um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, but uh, they said Arcola Lakes did Lakes Library did a mural. Oh, that's awesome. A mural. Oh, that's yeah. fancy. That's super cool. <laughs> that's fancy. Um, yeah, giving... so oh, that's that could fancy. be a fun thing to explore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if anyone else has teen programming ideas, um, please share. I feel like that's always a, a an age group where, um, you know, people are always like, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I've, been, I've been forced to, to look up adults and then downsize it. Yeah. So my teens can fit, so it can mm-hmm. fit my teens. So. Mm-hmm. But thanks, guys, for the ideas. I appreciate it. Ooh, Megan, Megan Miller says we did read to a pet program. So we had real dogs and animals, and they read a book, and our teens love it. Um, and this is from the Drummond Library in um, Read to a Pet in Montana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if they have, like, I don't know, if you can get, like, fun pets. Um, like, we did a, there was a therapy, there was, like, a therapy pet program Mm-hmm. At, at grad school and they would have dogs and they'd have cats and they also had mini horses and the mini horses oh, yeah. were like insanely popular mm-hmm. um I mean they were very cute and they also were named like kiwi and chocolate so oh, like <laughs> so cute. hard not to love it's them little, but um a little, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah people would go crazy for the mini horses um so if there's like unique animals around yeah yeah, that's 
tegar aja. Awang udah pak. Um, some other ideas that I remember seeing, and maybe this is more towards adults, um, but I mean, I think definitely better, good for older populations. I'm not sure how this would work with COVID regulations though, but like um, working with shelters, um, with like animal training or like volunteering or something at the shelter, maybe combining with the reading to pets um, kind of socialization stuff. Um, I saw some things about conservation efforts. Um, so partnering perhaps with like your local fish, wildlife and parks um, office and, and seeing if there's educational opportunities around, I don't know, fish or, you know, like whatever. <laughs> um, like uh, there's also, there's always all kinds of cool ongoing projects that FWP and other kind of environmental folks are working on um, and maybe just kind of explaining that to I mean maybe kids would be interested too but I think like teen teenage is when you really start to kind of think about like larger implications of of how all these complex systems are interconnected so maybe that might appeal to some folks um, let's see uh, Marin says, if we're able to meet in person this year, I want to do a weird pet show and tell. Oh, that would be great. Um, yeah, Molly says, we're trying to work out a pet supply drive with the local shelters and animal rescues, which is great. Charlene says, a musician has just put out a new al album all about animal songs for kids of all ages. Um, so that's super cool. Um, or like you could make, I don't know if you guys have seen, but like on Spotify, they sometimes have those themed playlists of like everything that mentions a leopard or I don't know, you could go out and find all sorts of fun songs around a certain animal and like, I don't know, talk about like cultural meanings or like whatever about certain animals. Um, oh, uh, and Charlene included a link for Will Parker Music, which is great. Megan says, we have also done a mini golf that was an animal theme all around the library. Hmm, that's kind of cool. You could have different animal facts at each um, hole or whatever. Um, who doesn't love mini golf? Uh, Whitney says, we are looking into birdhouse building kits. That's really cool. Um, uh, that also reminds me, you could, you could build bat boxes. Um, bats are a big thing here in Montana um, because we have we have a lot of bats here and they're very important to pollination and they're also very cute. I feel bad bats get a bad rap um, but they're very cute and they're very important and um, there's all, all sorts of cool fun bat facts <laughs> that you can do. Uh, and Charlene says about Will Parker he will give you a price break if he can line up a tour in your area so that's good to know. And then Kate said that there's some cool citizen science activities related to animals. That's actually a super great um, thing. I'm glad you mentioned that, Kate. Um, SciStarter, I think is the site.org.com. I'm going to say .org. It might be .com. I don't remember. Um, but SciStarter dot whatever um, is a citizen science repository. And so you can go on there and search for any kind of citizen science project and browse all sorts of projects um, and contribute to active research projects right now. It's actually really, really, really cool. Um, so if you have people who love science, who want to get involved, um, SciStarter is a great place to, to kind of dip your feet into that. Um, any other ideas? Or questions? Marin says featured pet from the local shelter or humane society. That's great. Um, and ah, Charlene, thank you so much for including the SciStarter website. Uh, it is SciStarter.org. 
and they do have library kits so you can take a look at that um, so things that people can check out for certain citizen science projects um, and then they can contribute in that way um, so yeah uh, any other questions, comments, ideas? So this isn't regarding what we were talking about, but I saw that someone was asking about the virtual, um, like the virtual meetings. And so last year when we were doing it virtual for summer reading program, we um, had people register and then we put, we made the kits that was going to be available for like the following weeks um, and we made them up and then we just put them outside our library and so then when we were demonstrating the craft they could do it with us but in their homes if that makes sense and it seemed to be a really big hit to have the the craft or the kits available to them so that they could watch and like we've had we had more numbers go up than we've ever had from the virtual thing oh, so that's great <laughs> because of, so that they could follow along with the craft because before when we were doing it no one really wanted to join us mm -hmm. but then once we did the kits we had a big success so that was another idea that I kind of had to share is that I know like with us being small it was easier but like big towns if they could just get like they could put like yes or no if they want the kit then you kind of would know how many to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. I know a lot of people have found surprising success with the take home kits. Um, yeah, so. Um, let's see, any other questions or comments? Um, and those that are like not doing it virtual, um, we've just we've learned that like when we we have set our time to do the summer reading program, we do it like like an hour before we know like there's a food program going on, so that the moms know that they don't have to get out twice in a day. They can just go to like our program and then head to like the lunch program or whatever. So you could see if there's something happening that day to kind of go around that time. That seems to get the numbers up as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be super great to coordinate in that way. Um, Charlene says, it'd be cool if kids could make a video of the featured pet from the local shelter and post on the library page. That's always a great idea. Um, And yeah, if anyone has like a specific social media plan that their library does, feel free to share. Um, I feel like that's something that I always can learn more from. Um, and there's like some libraries that do it super well, but I just, wow. I've never, I like, I don't even have a Facebook anymore. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a Facebook page. Um, and I have a feature called Art uh, Author Spotlight that I just started. So my um, challenge to myself is to get get uh, a few interviews with upcoming artists so they can be featured and you know make that a part of their brand of getting people to buy their books and stuff. Mm -hmm. and That's cool. In the in in that it'll get the our library to explode, exposure too. Mm -hmm. on social media yeah yeah that I've seen a lot of things where you like you have to um like specifically plan out themed posts or like regularly scheduled posts um you know they have like throwback Thursday or fun read Friday or that sort of thing um so that's something I've been looking more into um Any other questions or comments? Any questions about CSLP, um, especially for Montana libraries? I know that a lot of people do use CSLP in their library, but if you're a new librarian or um, 
like maybe you're aware of it, but you're not quite sure. Um, I'm always happy to either explain here or you can always reach out to me and I'm happy to go through on a one-on-one -on -one basis of what's available to you because there's quite a bit. No other comments? Cool. Well, I mean, we've been chatting for an hour. Um, I will change for, for Montana libraries. I will change the CE for this just so that it's one hour <laughs> instead of two. <laughs> and it's not what we had originally planned. Um, but you will still get credit for, for coming for this time. Um, and Karen, I can still provide the OPI credit to you as well. Again, just for one hour um, instead of two. But um, for out-of-state librarians, if you do need a certificate of attendance, uh, please let me know. I'm going to put my email into the chat box. It's just akim at mt.gov. So please um, email me and I can uh, provide that to you. Um, but otherwise, thank you for coming and thank you for your patience uh, for the kind of unexpected turn that this meeting had. Uh, and I hope that you are able to come and join us next week, next Friday, um, for Sherry's actual workshop. <laughs> and not just me talking <laughs> to all of you. Um, but yeah, please do reach out at any point in time if you have questions. And Felicia, I saw that you have some questions about CSLP. So if you want to stay on and um, I can chat with you about that, that's totally fine. If anyone else wants to stay on as well, that's cool. Um, but I will go ahead and stop the recording.